Hello and welcome back to Sparrows End Homestead. If you have been here before, then you know that I'm Mel and that I make videos about my back garden, about my allotment, cottage garden, container garden, growing food and things like that. If you are new here, then welcome. And I'm really glad you stopped by. Now in this video, I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel that's going to be all about how much food I can grow in one year. There's going to be a couple of videos that come out in quite quick succession that are mainly lots of preparation. In this first video we are going to take an inventory of all of the seeds that I have got. I'm also going to give you some hints and tips as to how you can keep your seed cost low. And then in the second video I'm going to start sowing my chilli seeds and my onion seeds. Now the reason why I want to make this video is that there is a cost of living crisis in the UK as I believe there are in other countries as well and the cost of food has skyrocketed. In this household we do eat meat and dairy but we are predominantly vegetarian I would say and we eat a ton of veg. The fridge is always emptying out because we eat the veg that we buy so fast. And I'm absolutely determined to make the best, the most that I can from the growing space that I have this year. Partly because the homegrown food that I have grown in the past tastes so good, but also because I'm hoping it's going to save me a bit of money on those supermarket prices as well. So in this series or in this playlist, I'm going to be tracking how much money I'm spending, roughly how much time I'm spending and what kind of harvest I'm getting at the end of all of that. And if that sounds like something that you are interested in, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the videos when they come out. Now, who you've got talking to you at the moment is actually editing Mel, who has had to come back and redo the intro to this video um, because some for some reason like the little video file corrupted itself so I thought I'd just pop back on. I'm in a different jumper I think so I'm probably going to look a bit different from this moment forward in the video but we're going to go back to previous Mel who actually recorded the video. So now we have a nice clean and clear space to grow the seedlings in. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in all of the seeds that I can find from all over the house, all the different places that I keep them in. I'm going to dump them on here and we're going to have a look at what we've got. Right then, you are going to have to forgive all the mess and the stuff that is behind me that also needs clearing up. Um, and some of it's from this space here and it's been shunted onto those worktops until I can work out what I'm going to do with it. Anyway, ignore the background basically is what I'm saying. So I have got a tin of veg seeds and a tin of flower seeds and then I've got um, probably about six or seven packets, no less than that. I think about five or six packets that I bought for myself to sow in sort of March, April time. And then I also remembered that I got few packets here, um, these were a birthday present a couple of weeks ago. And then I also raided my mum's seed pot, tray, storage, whatever, and took everything of hers that she didn't want or that she had too much of or things that she felt were a bit too old and she was gonna throw away, but I decided actually, no, I will try and grow them. So I have quite a lot of seeds but I haven't spent a huge amount of money. So a few tips then. I've also, I've also got this scarf on. <laughs> I've got this scarf on because it's the first day of spring in the UK, it's the 1st of March, and um, it's about six degrees. It's quite cold still, <laughs> considering it's spring. That's by the by. So hints and tips then for saving money on seeds. The obvious one, once you get growing, is to save your own seed, but we'll talk about that later in the season because it's not something you can do now if this is your first time growing. Things that you can do, those last two that I've just mentioned, are absolutely 
critical are key. You can request seeds for Christmas and for birthdays. And if, like me, your birthday happens to fall in kind of late winter, early spring, then that's amazing <laughs> because you can kind of get any seeds that you didn't get for Christmas, you can get for your birthday. So ask for seeds as gifts. And one of the things that I like in my little, I've got this little seed inventory book, which I'll show you a bit more of, is it's got these little um, seed wish lists in it. So you can write down a few um, types of seed or varieties of seed or something that you want, and then you can cut out that page and you can um, give it to whoever it is that's agreed to buy you some seeds for Christmas or for birthdays. So I will definitely be using those in the future. Um, so yes, seeds as gifts is fantastic. And then also, if you know anybody who grows seeds, I do this with my dad as well, um, anyone who grows a garden, you'll probably find that they have too many seeds, they have leftover seeds, they have seeds for varieties of vegetable or fruit or what have you that they didn't particularly like, but that you might like. So for example, last year I grew Moneymaker tomatoes, which is a really, really popular variety in the UK. Um, I actually I grew Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight and I didn't like either of them. <laughs> I didn't think they were that great. Um, and they certainly didn't compare to the other varieties I grew that I really did like. So I palmed off <laughs> my money maker tomato seeds um, to my mum because she's happy to just, you know, wants a standard tomato to slice up and put in salads and put in sandwiches and things. And as long as it tastes of a tomato, she's not that bothered. Whereas me, I'm just, I'm looking for something special from my tomatoes. <laughs> so the money maker just wasn't, just wasn't for me. And it works out that way sometimes. So if you know anyone, it could be a neighbour. So my neighbour and I, we swap seeds and we swap little kind of plug plants or starts, I think you call them in the US. We swap those over the kind of the course of the year. My dad brings me round um, uh, started seeds, plug plants and things, and sometimes even bigger ones if he just finds that when he starts to plant things out, that he has too many of something, particularly tomatoes. Talk to people, find fellow gardeners because they really will save you a lot of money. Also, if you have an allotment, if you can get yourself an allotment this year, then that's fantastic because there's always people there that are willing to give away things to you. One of my plot friends, gave me about half a dozen leftover runner bean plants last year. And in the shed at my allotment, there's also a little box that you can put your leftover seeds in. So, you know, probably a good 10 packets that I've got in here have been ones that I have taken from the shed. And once I've sort of used them this year, if there's any leftover, I'll put them in there. Again, I'll try and put back. So if there's anything that I have an excess of or anything that I've grown and I don't particularly like, I'll pop a few packets back into that box just to kind of keep that cycle of, of like giving and, and receiving kind of keep that going at the allotment. So yes, so there's that. And then there's also lots of seed companies do 99p seed collections, which are always worth looking out for. I know for a fact <laughs> that DT Browns, who I buy quite a lot of seeds from, they do packets of seeds for 99p. So that's always good. And if you go at the end of the season to places like Asda, to supermarkets basically, to Wilco's, um, and even actually now in January, February, March time, they'll have discounted like 50p packets of seeds. So look out for things that are on sale at kind of odd times of the year. And then places like supermarkets and Wilco's own brand, um, places like that, you can get some really decent seeds from them. Oh, that hot cup of tea is much, much needed. So my kitchen is still quite cold. It's at the back of the house. It doesn't have a great heating system in it. I will be sowing some seeds in the next episode. They might take a while to germinate though, because we have got two weeks of cold temperatures. And then after that, we hit double figures again. We get to 10 degrees and 11 degrees and then things will start to happen. So this is a great period of time really to get yourselves organized and sorted ready for those temperatures to rise. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go through everything that I have got and I've got a couple of options for kind of how I might want to go about this. I can just fill out all the seeds I've got in just one big long list or 
I can categorize them into seed types. Like I could have like uh, tomato and then list all my tomato varieties, like the dates, how many of them I've got, like how many packets and stuff like that. So I'm not quite sure what direction I'm gonna go in yet, but I've got to get all of this noted down so I can see what I've got. Because funnily enough, another way to save money on seeds is to just stop duplicating them and to stop buying more than you need because you never need as many seeds as you want to buy. So completing this seed inventory, is going to be my first step to saving myself some money this year. gosh that was wild <laughs> did you see i mean let me show you what i've actually got now i've put it all in one place <laughs> oh my gosh look at that try not to let them fall out of the tin but that is absolutely incredible and actually if i hadn't done this if i hadn't brought them all together in in one place including stuff that i got for my birthday stuff that you know i've just brought back from my mum's I would never, I just, I mean, I have got enough, I mean, I've got enough, let me show you in here as well. I've got enough, it's a bit scribbly, I haven't kept it neat and tidy, but I've got one page, three pages, nearly a fourth page, which I just, I cannot believe what I've got, I can't believe how many I've got, and also, can't believe how many of them I haven't actually paid for because of all of the things that I just said previously. Um, you know, just knowing other people who garden. And I, I, I'm going to put that now as my absolute top tip is make friends with other gardeners, with other growers, because I mean, the amount of stuff that I've got here as well that I can swap back with people that I can put back into the, the shed at the allotment and share with other people as well, because I do not need that many. And on another note, I found duplicates. I found duplicates and that's what I'm hoping to eradicate by actually keeping you know a closer eye on what I've got partly because it's wasteful or it, it could be wasteful um, and then also because when I am buying seeds I haven't got the money to spend on my garden in the sense that I can afford to buy things twice when I don't need them twice over so that that was a that was a revelation <laughs> um, so yeah so I've now got this big long list of everything I've got vegetable wise I'm actually not going to do flowers right now because it doesn't fit in well some flowers are edible but it doesn't quite fit in with my how many vegetables can I grow in a year video or theme for this particular series although things like nasturtiums and calendula will, will crop up in in the videos because they are edible like I said so what I'm going to do now I'm going to do this off camera because you don't need to see me do this as such is I'm now going to I'm going to categorize basically I decided to use both sections and I'm going to categorize categorize everything now um so that what I end up with is the show you on a double page so what I end up with is I'm gonna find out how many tomato seeds I've got and you know how many parsnip varieties I've got and how many kale varieties I've got and things like that once I've done that I'm then going to make a list of all the seeds that I want my kind of wish list of seeds for the year any gaps that need filling because you know I've noticed that I don't have many radish seeds and I don't have many tomato seeds and so on and so forth or cucumbers as well i think i've got like six cucumber seeds in one packet and i really want to grow the same variety that i grew last year that my dad gave me some plants off they're called femspot and i know you can get them from king seeds so i want to 
yeah, make a list of any gap filling that I've got to do. And what would be absolutely amazing is if I can get my seed order to less than £20 for the year and it's just plugging a few gaps that are, I mean, it's hard to imagine, but <laughs> plugging some gaps in that massive pile of seeds I've got. So I will do that and then I will get back to you and um, let you know where we're going from here. I just spent my lunch break basically categorising my seeds and looking through some seed catalogues to fill the gaps that I found in my massive collection of vegetable seeds. So what I ended up doing is I went through like my big main list and started to, well let me show you, she says, let me try and find, uh, oh yeah, right gonna show you my beans and peas category. You can see what I've done, I think, <laughs> on there, is I've written down the side just like a little code. So I could have done this where I had like runner of beans on one, broad beans on the other, but that just doesn't make sense for the amount that I'm growing. You can see down the edge here, I've got, I've got dwarf French bean, climbing French bean, broad beans, um, what else have I got? Runner beans and some peas at the bottom there. And then the varieties. I haven't worried too much about the number of packets and the use by date um, because all I wanted to do really was just get a sense of what I've got and what is missing. I'm really chuffed with this and it has highlighted which sections are a bit thin on the ground. Basically my brassicas are fine, beans are fine. What else have I got? Onions are okay, chilies and peppers are fine. Tomatoes aren't too bad, but I've noticed that I don't have a cherry variety in amongst them, so I will correct that. And then my biggest gap really is of these two. So my cucumbers and my courgette and squash section is a bit rubbish. So I've been through the seed catalog and I've, I mean, I don't need all of these. When you see this list, you're just like, oh my gosh, you don't need all this stuff. So I don't need all of that. <laughs> And I don't need all of this, but they are basically all the varieties and things that I'm interested in and that I've picked out of the seed catalogue that I think would be really good for me to grow. And then I will whittle it down. So I think we are organised as far as seeds are concerned. I don't really need to buy anything that's on my wish list just yet. Maybe towards the end of this month, start of April, I will start picking off the um, the seeds and the varieties and things that are on that list but for now we are fine so if you've enjoyed this video then make sure you give it a thumbs up if you want to support my food growing I'm going to call it a journey for this year if you want to support that then there is a buy me a coffee link in the description box below you can also buy the seed inventory and my garden planner that crops up from time to time in my videos all of those things contribute directly back into the garden and into the allotment thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I am off to film episode two so I'll see you again very soon